in studio for a bit is mayoral candidate Adrian Perkins. You know, Aaron had mentioned in the last segment, what was it, uh, Shreveport's annual police budget, what did you say, 56, 58 million? 58 million, million Jeez, yeah. I didn't realize it was that much. Mm-hmm. And yet compared to Baton Rouge, it's next to nothing. Yeah. And what Adrian said during the break, as you threw that number out, you said, we have to figure out a way to pay our policemen more. We do. Well, you know what? That's what the mayor does. Oh, yeah. How, how, like I said before, like I've said a hundred times, mm-hmm. we are not a city, uh, we're not flush with cash. Yeah. Well, those smart city initiatives will save us a ton of money. I mean, the money we're wasting right now on the litigation behind the water department, um, we could be saving if we had a smart water system. Do you think Shreveport city government is bloated and or inefficient? Uh, I think you can absolutely point to inefficiencies in our city government. And what you need to do as a leader, you need to make tough decisions and prioritize uh, what your city needs. And right now our city needs to be safer. And our city needs to have better job opportunities, so money needs to go to that police department. Speaking of money, and mm-hmm. we had talked in the last segment just a bit about uh, the economic flight from the city mm-hmm. and how you stop people with jobs, with money, the taxpayers basically from, yeah. from, from leaving Shreveport. Oh, yeah. Um, would you as mayor... As a candidate, would you take a no tax pledge? Would you say, you know, no new property taxes, no new taxes on the citizen, no new sales taxes? How do you feel about that? I got to get in office before I make a pledge like that. Once I mean, you can look, we don't have a line item budget uh, for the city operations budget. So I need to get in office and actually see where each and every dollar is going before I made a pledge like that. What we need to focus on is growing Shreveport. So well, let's that our let me refer. What is your inclination toward that? Mm-hmm. Oh no, I'm I'm not a fan of taxes at all. I mean, one of the reasons why we were our Moody's downgraded our um, our credit rating is because we overtaxed our, our population. That was one of the reasons that they cited. So, no, I, I'm i not a fan of taxes whatsoever. Adrian, and I would like to make that pledge. I just need to see the books inside the office the, first. The, the criticism of you is no experience. <laughs> you, 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 you know, this is a big budget. Please let me address this. Please. Yeah. Get <laughs> Please after it. Because, you know, yeah. yeah, you got a great pedigree and all yeah. that good stuff. But this is a big city. Yes. You never run a business yes. like this. Yes. So I, I've managed a multi-million dollar budget since I was 22 Where, years old. Where? What? Uh, in the military. In the military, I had... M- you managed the D- Department of Defense budget. Oh, yeah. When I was 22, Aaron, when I deployed to Iraq the first time, uh, as a matter of fact, in the train-up in Iraq, I had millions of dollars of property and millions of dollars of uh, in an operations budget, in a training budget. But you had lots of stripes above you who were looking over what you were doing. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I also have a city council here if I was the mayor. you still It's still about building a team at this most fundamental element. But, this, mm-hmm. but I want to say this. We talk about experience... I've worked at the federal government, uh, not just in the military. I worked at the Pentagon, and I also clerked for a federal court. I've worked at the state level. I worked for uh, the governor on his criminal justice reform stuff, and I've worked at the local level uh, for the DA's office. And as I pointed out, I've raised some funds for the mayor's office. And I did all that by 32. I also have private experience. I've worked for two of the largest corporate law firms in the world. So uh, when people critique me about experience, usually it's about political experience. And we can't think that narrowly here in Shreveport if we want to grow and we want to change. I-49 through the inner city. Does Adrian Perkins support it? What do you do with the residents who are in the path of it? The only thing I'm focused on, because NL Cog is making that decision, is working with NL Cog to best leverage whatever decision they make. But the mayor the sits on NL Cog. Oh yeah. Well, they already made the they already made but the decision. But you support what they've decided? No, it's not a matter of supporting it. It's a matter of just making sure Shreveport benefits from it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I don't, you know, my energy has been trying to figure out, you know, if they cut it through or if they go around, how can we best leverage, you know, their decision for Shreveport? Is cutting it through best for Shreveport in your opinion? Uh, I Aaron, I would have to look at the details of that. Like I said, I've just been focused on working with the. Uh, president once mm-hmm. it's made once in ocog once the decision is made cross by you mm-hmm. um public investment in that would mayor perkins support that so it would have to be I, I already told you all i need to know the private dollar amount um public investment i would not overburden the city so it would have to be somewhere you know some very low number as percentage of what we have to put up to do that but it is essential that we develop downtown i've said that throughout the campaign so how do we do that uh because uh, i had said all along in my criticisms mm-hmm. of the cross bayou project yeah. i said look it 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 
do we really need new stuff in Shreveport yeah. when, you know, you want office space, you want retail space, you want living yeah. space, you got it 600 yards away, it's called yeah. downtown. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have to simultaneously be doing economic development and getting those jobs here while you're developing downtown, but we do need to develop downtown. No city in America is growing without a robust downtown. So yes, we need to do it. And how we do it is similar to what we saw when there was a, a, a developer that wanted to invest $140 million, $139 million into our city uh, in the previous deal. There are a lot of developers that want to come to Shreveport. So working with Liz Swain at the Downtown Development Authority to again attract those developers, private dollars is critical here. Do you still see a racial divide in Shreveport? And if so, what can be done about it? Yes, ma'am. There's a there's a big racial divide Absolutely. in Shreveport. I mean, you can drive around our city and look at that. What do you do about it? Uh, that's that's another one of those morality issues in, here in our city. So, you know, my idea is to do better partnerships with faith based organizations to really get out in the neighborhood and talk to people, um, and also show that you care about everybody in Shreveport by the way you govern uh, my administration. So I, I, I'll say this, my generation, um, if going to change our city and really mend those racial wounds here, we're going to have to be the ones to do it, the younger generation.